Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In. On my crackhead update, I went up to the 7-Eleven this morning to fill my old lady's car with gas. She got a thing about she don't never want her car to be below a half tank of gas. Well, I do mine different. When the warning light come on and says 50 miles, that's when I fill the tank back up. I've talked about this guy in previous videos. He lived here, same complex I live in. He got a brand new CT6 2022 Cadillac. And when I pull up at the gas tank, these aggressive ass uh, panhandlers, they approach him, want to wash his windows and put gas in his car. He tell him, hey man, I got it, man. And he just kept on and getting all aggressive with it. Texas is a stand your ground state. So he pulled a 40 out on the ass. This really is a, is a peaceful dude. But people get tired of it. Every time you go to get gas and somebody running up to your car fucking with you, people get tired of that bullshit. So he pulled a gun out and told her, hey, man, I'll shoot the goddamn hell out of all three of y'all, man. Get y'all punk ass away from my car, man. Now they want to act crazy. Hey, man, please don't shoot me, man. You must be on drugs or something, man. We all we want to do is try to hustle and get us some money. So the one of the cashiers in 7-Eleven see him with a gun in his hand, so she called the cops. Less than seen about three minutes, man. Cops every damn where. Uh, they didn't take these fools to jail. They checked his gun license. And they just talked to him, told him to leave the premises, and they give him a criminal trespass if they return to the property. Well, that's a damn shame. You can't even go get some damn gas in your car for these stupid ass fucking clowns running up to you fucking with you. You're just trying to live your life. You know, you made that bed hard. You got to lay in that motherfucker. You got to sleep in it. Nobody didn't tell you to get strung out on drugs. You don't want to work. You don't want to do shit. You can't hustle worth a damn. Nobody don't owe you shit. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your motherfucking shanks out, and let's get ready to ride. Yeah, at 7 o'clock, I got a flight to to the ATL. I'm going to take my old lady with me on this trip, because last time I went up there, all those guys uh, had their pretty-ass old ladies with them. So I'm taking mine with me. We're going to fly out tonight at 7, and we'll be back in Dallas Thursday. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this video. Yeah, I was talking to a guy here. He lives at this complex. He's a professor at a Dallas Baptist Theological Seminary, which is right down the street from me. And me and him were just standing there talking. Up by the computer lab, up on the third floor. Well, anyway, this chick was over, over ear hustling the conversation because I'm not talking to her. He's not talking to her. And he was telling me about, uh, yeah, man, you make a lot of money on, in the lecture field of uh, being a guest professor. That pays, that's a high-paying job there, especially if you, can, you get your clientele. Uh, and so she chimed in the conversation. She said, uh, how much do they pay for that? I said, they paid me well. She said, well, if they pay you well, they mean they're going to pay me well. I, don't, I really ain't want no problem with this lady. And uh, we kept talking, and she said, what did you lecture about? I said, uh, it depends on uh, what university that I'm uh, giving a lecture at. It varies from university to university. And uh, she said, yeah, I can do that myself. She said, what's the requirement? I say, uh, you got to have an advanced degree. They prefer a doctorate degree. And they want you to have publication. They want you to have something that's of original scholarship. And she said, uh, and I guess you're saying you got an advanced degree. I said, yeah, I do. Uh, she took out her phone. She said, what's your name? And all she got to go to Google. 
I, uh, so the, the guy who's a professor at uh, Dallas uh, Baptist Seminary he said, I personally know this guy. He's got an advanced degree. She said, what is your degree in? I don't answer. I ask, I say, do you have an advanced degree? She said, no, I got a bachelor's degree. I said, well, you don't even qualify. She said, oh, oh I see you're not into empowering women. Hey, this crazy motherfucker go with this feminist bullshit. Empower women. I don't even know this fucking woman from Adam or Eve. I don't even know her. I said, Miss, I don't, I don't give a shit what you do. You can go, if you can give a lecture, go ahead, join the lecture circuit. I said, you get your foot in the door, go for it. I said, but they don't accept people with bachelor's degrees. I said, how you going to lecture a class and all the students may have maybe master's degree candidates? That means they didn't graduate from a bachelor's degree program. What the fuck you going to lecture them on? What? What's going to be of original scholarship? Oh, she hot in fish grease. Can't stand to see nobody do nothing that she can't do. So a conversation go on, she she ain't gonna, she don't wanna let me win. She gotta have the last say so. She said, but uh, it's a lot of men just like you. You hate on women cause women living a good life. Women making money. Women don't need men now. I said, okay, you don't need a man. Well, take your ass on the lecture circuit. On, on, on the lecture circuit. What the fuck you talking to me about? Now I'm getting hot. She figured you get roast, keep bullshitting. I'm gonna roast your ass. I'm gonna have you at the manager's office telling about I curse your stupid ass out. So uh, the, the guy that's a uh, professor, he said, say, uh, he tried to defuse the situation. Said, Come on, man, let's walk. So me and him walked away. She said, yeah, that's what I thought. You better walk away. And I turned around and unleashed on her. I might be in the manager's office later on. I cursed her fuck her ass out. I'm glad they got cameras and everything here. But she can't tell no fucking lie. Just dry ass start an argument with me. Don't even know me. Never ask me my name. Well, she later on, she asked me my name. But she wanted to Google me to see if I was telling her the truth. Well, that's a damn shame. If people just want to live their life. I don't want no fucking friends. I got enough friends. I got quite a few guys. I go around. I'm interested in talking to a lot of guys. I got different places I can go. We sit and have a good conversation. But I personally know those guys. I ain't trying to make no new fucking friends. If it ain't not, you're not financially feasible, I don't need you, need you for a fucking friend. Uh, we had a, a guy at, at the Ramsey unit. A lot of people, if you're old school out of Houston, you might be unheard of this guy. They called him a uh, step array. Uh, he he was hooked in with Roy Harfines and uh, Skipper Lee Frazier. He knowed all the movers and shakers in old school Houston. He knew all these guys. But he had had so many cases, so finally they had to send him to prison. They gave him an eight year sentence. They called him step array. This motherfucker was a smart ass street dude. He put him in one hole with us. Guys had laced him up about old Lord. And he said right then, he said, man, old Lord won't be nothing but a piece of cake for me. He said, I'm going to play old Lord like he's a fucking piano. He said, old Lord ain't shit. I'm going to play his ass. It was a way to get to old Lord. And this guy figured it out real fast. So a first day out, oh Lord asked him, say, what's your name? What they call you? He already know your name. He got your card there with your picture on it. He said, uh, call me Step Array, oh Lord. He said, oh Lord, for oh Lord could even finish. He said, oh Lord, I've been wanting to meet you. He said, I just, I wanted to meet me a powerful motherfucking white man who's a friend of Jesus Christ's damn self. He said, Keep on. I like that goddamn talk. That old, old step right. You a good talking nigga. I like that. Because you're a smart nigga. That, that's a smart nigga right there. See, he know what to say. Separate, separate say, Oh, Lord, I've been praying. I've been saying, 
If I ever go to penitentiary, I'm going to go to the Ramsey Union where I can meet old Lord himself. I've heard a lot about you. You know, they write books and every goddamn thing about you, old Lord. He said, I know, I know that. They got the goddamn Bible. That's about me right there. And I'm king of all niggas. You know that too, don't you? He said, yes, sir. You're my goddamn king. That dude, could he took to that field work just like he'd been doing it all his life. The shit wasn't hard if you was in good physical shape. You just need to learn how to do it. You ain't never did that shit before. You're going to be working against yourself, and that's going to make your shit extra hard. Well, a guy's been locked up a long time. They know how to use the right body English and how to make their day easy as fuck. We was out there for a long time. And so you're going to catch second wind, third wind, all that shit, because they wasn't going to bring your ass in. Well, anyway, every day we go to work, Step array light in on old Lord's ass. Boy, he, he give old Lord here. One day, uh, Red Rider, the field major, was sitting down. Uh, old Lord told uh, Red Rider, he said, that Step array nigga, that's a good goddamn nigga. That, that nigga, that's, that's a good nigga. He going to help him. I'm going to take him right there with me. But he said, but that old nigga JT over there, I done talked about him in previous video. JT had took one of them field bosses' gun and beat the hell out of him and shot at his ass. Cat didn't do shit to him. They put him in solitary and put him right back in the fields. Cat liked it, people who stand up for themselves. He didn't, they didn't beat JT up, they ain't do none of that shit. Put him right back out there. But he told him a secret. Do not fuck with JT. He don't give a goddamn about getting shot. You gonna have to shoot him because he coming at your ass. And he militant as fuck, but he get along with all inmates, except the inmate guard type guys. Use a regular guy, this guy will help you out, do anything he can to help you. Always got some positive stuff to talk about. But the old Lord said, man, you see that nigga JT? That's one of them Mac Mac niggas right there. I have to kill that nigga right there. The cat wouldn't have told him, I'd kill him right now. But the nigga work, he don't call me no problem. But old Step Ray, that's my nigga right there. Step Ray is a good nigga. He said, oh, Step Ray. Yes, sir, low lord. He said, listen at that nigga. That nigga sound good in the motherfucker. That's my nigga right there. Step Ray, you my nigga. You can sit out on the ground you want to. You ain't got to work no more. Just sit down right there. Boy, we were working hard as a son of a bitch. Step Ray sitting there smiling like a motherfucker, smoking him a cigarette. <laughs> he had, oh, lord, when we come in, get searched, when he get ready to search Step Array, he said, go on, old Step Array, nigga. I know you ain't got no country band on you. I know you ain't got shit. You the good nigga. But, I, you know, dudes back then, I understand why they didn't rock the boat. Some guys know they couldn't handle all that brutality. They couldn't handle that solitary confinement. Plus, these people allowed you to go home. It's totally different between then and now. Now they keep your ass. They don't give a fuck about you, Molly inmate. You can graduate from college. All that shit don't mean a damn thing. You stay in prison. You go down now with an eight-year sentence, you probably going to do the whole damn eight. Back then, you went with an eight. You was coming up for parole in eight months is your first parole. If you did get a one-year set off, 20 months, you going to be out of there. You didn't caught disciplinary. You went to work. They was going to allow you to go home. Totally different. So I understand. I used to thought some of them old guys, I used to say, these old brainwashed Uncle Tom son of a bitch. Everybody couldn't handle that brutality. Everybody didn't want to go to solitary confinement and get beat up and stomped, the big bear beating the hell out of them. They didn't want that. So they go along with the program and get their ass out of prison. Took me a little while as I got older to figure out why some guys didn't buck the system. Oh, it sound good when you're talking about it. The consequences was a motherfucker. And people always talking about good shit. Why you ain't never advanced in your life, you don't ever want to sacrifice for shit. Like in the video, uh, my last video I was talking about spending time in prison and they give you all this money. Some guys say, man, I ain't no way I'd do that. Just think, the average person living out here ain't going to never have shit. He can be a law-abiding system, citizen and all that shit. That don't mean shit. Go to Walmart and say, hey, I'm a law-abiding citizen. They still want their goddamn money. They don't care nothing about none of that bullshit. That's why a lot of people ain't never went nowhere. They don't want to sacrifice shit. 
They want to stand on the sideline and wait till the product is finished. Then they swoop in on the finished product. All the struggle it takes to get to that product, they don't want to participate in. Everybody got that entitlement or pie in the sky after I die and all that other bullshit ass rhetoric don't work in the real world. When you put rubber to flesh, real world activity, you got to come on with it. Everybody's good at something. You got to you got to navigate the things you are good at, explore those avenues, and sacrifice. Everything requires sacrifice. You don't want to sacrifice nothing, you ain't going to get nothing. Most people ain't born with no silver spoon in their mouth. You actually got to be a go-getter. You can't do it through words. You got to actually go and get it. The, the thing that I'm engaged in now, I went in, it, I joined, I got into it through blind faith. I said, man, if this work, I'm going to have a lot of fucking money. I got everything to gain and nothing to lose. And so far, it's paying good-ass fucking dividends. I ain't mad. This will be the best fucking Christmas I ever had in my life. It'll be this one here. The best Christmas I ever had is this one come forthcoming. I got to get ready and throw some stuff together. And my old lady, I done told her, ain't even taking no bunch of shit. We're only going to be there overnight. And we'll be back in Dallas. Y'all uh, keep your shanks ready. Watch out for these aggressive-ass panhandlers. You might have to cluck one of them fools over the head. Do whatever is necessary to keep you out of the hospital and keep your loved ones safe. Support me over on Patreon. Like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.